The cheerleader from Heroes received the keys to a Nissan Rogue from her proud father. It's product placement, so blatant that it inspired Spurlock's latest film called Palm Wonderful Presents The Greatest Movie Ever Sold. It's a film about product placement in films financed solely by product placement in that film. Morgan joins us here now. Bloomberg, so, it's great to be here. I can't believe it's Bloomberg. I'm here at Bloomberg. It's product placement. By, Sponsored by Bloomberg. Right. <laughs> so you raised a, a million and a half dollars for yeah. this movie. I mean, it, it's an ironic tone. I saw it a few weeks ago. It was great. But did this come from a point of frustration for you? Well, it just came from this point that uh, it seems like you can't leave your house today without seeing some sort of person trying to sell you something. You know, right. some sort of brand, some sort of sponsor everywhere you look. Uh, you know, whether I'm in a cab, I'm, you know, at a gas pump, I'm in an elevator. There's advertisements everywhere. And we thought, you know, using product placement as a way to dive into this whole story of advertising and marketing would be the best way. But for filmmakers, we've talked about this when we uh, talked to some of our colleagues out on the West Coast. They, there is a frustration, particularly for people who are trying to get going or That's find right. it's a medium-sized, you know, project that all the money really goes to, to the high end, and you kind of got to sell a little bit and of when, well, and especially, yourself. Well, and especially when you're at the low end, like documentary filmmakers like myself, like we are at the bottom of the barrel. It does not get <laughs> much lower. And so, uh, you know, for us as independent filmmakers to try and get people to want to latch onto this to help raise money, it's hard. So maybe this film will in some way, you know, make big giant companies you know want to support smaller independent filmmakers and it was interesting in the film because you you go through the filmmaking process and that is the movie that's it's right. trying to get this very same film sold yeah. you talked to I think it was 600 brands yeah more than 600 more than 600 yeah of how which many to bit did we get to actually yeah. come out? We had 15. When the film went to Sundance, we had 15 brands. When the film opened, and it's now you know spreading out all across the country, we had 22 promotional partners in total, a success rate of about 2.5%. So you know, I, I had a failure rate of 97.5%. You know, uh, thick skin. That's the key to uh, cold calling. Yeah. Yeah. We're watching your pitch right there. This is from the trailer from the film. Yeah. And you, these are the folks from Sheets. The guys from Sheets, the greatest convenience store you'll ever go to. We're, uh, <laughs> we're now at Sheets locations all across you know. Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, um, Maryland, and Ohio, you can get the greatest movie ever sold, Collector Cups. <laughs> well, it, you know what's a kind of funny in watching this is that when you talk to some of these brands who you did get to sign on, yeah. They were excited about almost getting to do what the big guys get to do, have That's, that product placement in yeah, there. Yeah, and, and get, to, get to be associated with a film that, uh, literally, we've gotten so much press around this movie. I mean, the fact that we're on, you know, national television talking about Sheets, this little regional chain, they're ecstatic. Uh, you know, it is a chance for kind of the smaller guys to play with the big boys, and we did get a lot of big companies on board. You know, Mini Cooper, who's owned by B&W, is the, the greatest car you'll ever drive. Hyatt <laughs> Hotels, the greatest hotel you'll ever experience. So there were very large companies that were kind of co mingling with little mom and pops, which is great. Well, we've looked at this this question of almost over-sponsorship or that, that saturation point where the consumer where says, stop? right, it, yeah. it's disingenuous. Well, and it's and it's not just even within films. You know, well, the James Bond just announced yesterday that a third of that film's budget, Bond 23, is going to come from sponsors. It's going really? to come from $50 million a sponsor. So just think of how many products are going to be in that movie. It's going to be crazy. And so that's in entertainment. Now in real life, where do we draw the line? You know, advertising, it's making its way into schools now. You know, there's uh, advertising in school districts on lockers and gymnasiums, and I did it in the film you to kind of show to what's happening. A, a school district in Florida was Broward it? County, Florida, where now advertising is making its way into school districts, and it's kind of crazy. You know, there was a bill that was just floated in New York City in the city council where they're talking about selling off the naming rights to parks and playgrounds. So it's like, where does it end? Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's a statement on how cash poor so many state budgets are right now that they'll. They'll allow anyone essentially to advertise. Yeah. You had a tattoo parlor. A one well, in, in, the, the tattoo parlor that's Florida. School. Well, just last week we went to Altoona, the town formerly known as Altoona. Uh, you know, I flew there last Wednesday on JetBlue Airways, greatest airline you'll ever fly. <laughs> we chartered a flight from JFK, and I and I went there at one o'clock. I gave the mayor of the town a giant, you know, uh, prize patrol esque check for twenty five thousand dollars, and I bought the naming rights to the town. So for the next sixty days, Altoona is officially Palm Wonderful presents the greatest movie ever sold, Pennsylvania. Palm Wonderful, of course, the title sponsor of the greatest movie ever sold. Uh, as promised, Morgan Spurlock joins us now to answer your questions that came in from viewers via Twitter and Facebook. So first up, question we have for you. Yeah. From Matt Galligan of Simple Geo. He's the chief strategy officer there. He says, if people really knew that product placement was being targeted at them, would it change their opinion of the show? Does it? 
I think that if you know that things are in there, you would know. I think it would change your opinion of the show. Like, I think that, especially when it's written in the dialogue, and I hear somebody pull up in a vehicle, and they're like, boy, that Lincoln drives like a dream. It's like, <laughs> I start, yeah, it changes my opinion immediately, because it feels like the whole show has sold out. The soul is gone. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, we saw Procter & Gamble and Walmart get together with NBC this year and do something start to finish, aimed at kids, all product placement funded. But they labeled it as such. It's called Buy This Toy. It's a new show <laughs> yeah, called right. Buy This Toy. No, no, this one. Yeah. But, but it sounds like for you, the, the flagging it as this is an advertisement is the important part. Well, I think that you know, what they did in the UK, it just became legal in, in Great Britain. You know, product placements just started happening in February. At the beginning of the show where it says like TVMA, you know, to mature audiences, they also put a P at the front of the show. Just so you know, there's product placement here. They don't have like arrows going, oh, bye, right. look at this, you know, um, which I think will also be terrible. But I think just, just that simple part's enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, the bigger thing for me is don't write it into the dialogue. Let the smart yeah. people who make shows make the shows and you go sell your widgets. Yeah. Another question from uh, Morris Ponfield, uh, at M. Ponfield. Yeah. Biggest advertising surprise with filming the greatest movie ever sold and, and what comes free with your movie? <laughs> All the you laughs. Do. The, the biggest <laughs> thing, you get all the laughs absolutely free. The ticket costs $14, but, but all the laughs are complimentary. Um, no, the biggest surprise is the fact that anybody even paid, let it give us the money to make this movie. Yeah. I mean, as you said, you know, it took, we called 600 plus companies to fund the film, of which 99.9% .9 of them were like, absolutely not. We want nothing to do with this. No advertising agency would help us with this movie, with the exception of Kirshenbaum and Bond in New York. No product placement company would help put products in the film. I mean, people were scared to death of the movie. And you had to do this all yourself. And I literally was on the phone on the, like, every day cold calling. So you raised a, a million and a half. 1.8 was the, 1. the full 8. budget of the film, yeah. How long before you get to be profitable? Well, the film opened in theaters in profit. So, you know, okay. none of those none of those people who gave us money to put their products in the film get to recoup. So any money that comes in now on top of that is profit. It's cash. All right, last question here. Um, do you still enjoy McDonald's? I have not set foot inside of McDonald's since, you know, at the end of the movie, there's the since party scene. So at the end of the movie, there's a party scene. We shot that on March 2nd, 2003, last time I set foot inside. Do they let you inside? Well, if you look, if That's you look real other. closely, there's like a circle on the door with a red line around it, my, like going across my face, like no filmmakers allowed. And yeah. the success of that film was one of the things that made it hard in those pitches. It's, a good, right. it's a good movie, and as you say, Thanks. open now. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you very much.